mentioned that vSafe should be added to uh, VARS, but but only 4% of vSafe is added. Can you explain what that means to people and why it matters? VARS is, is designed specifically for, for medical professionals and people alike to report, hey, I got hurt. And when enough people have gotten hurt for officials to look at it and say, hey, this product isn't safe, it's got to come off the market. Right. In in VSafe was created to also do something similar to that and to make that process a little bit easier. You don't need as many records. Uh, you don't need as much information to record a report in VSafe. Now in VSafe, there have been over 800,000 reports of injury. And the deal was that in VSafe, every single report of injury was supposed to also then subsequently have a VARES report associated with it. Right. So that means all 800,000 should be in VARES. But unfortunately, or by design, however you want to look at it, only 30,000, only just over 30,000 of those 800,000 have been recorded in VARES. So what that means is that less than 4% of the records in VSAFE have actually been reported in VARES as they were supposed to uh, be done. Holy cow. I, I have to also, you know, think again, journalistically, and as a political consultant, the story never matches the goal, right? You know, you know this, it, you know, if you see behind the scenes in politics. So when you, you've you got the VRS system, it's been there for decades, you create a whole new system called VSAFE, right? Which I think is relatively recent, correct? And you mm-hmm. say this is an easier way to file a complaint, then that kind of cannibalizes the funnel, right, for filing complaints. And then, oops, you only transfer 4% of them over to the uh the more established database. I mean, what a sneaky way to basically sweep almost 800,000 um, adverse events under the rug. Right? Adverse events, and, hospitalizations, permanent injuries, deaths. Yeah, deaths. It, yeah Were compromises you, data set. It's, that's completely compromised. That's so disgusting. Um, let's go now to why we should... Oh, well, this is an important question that I was asked and I didn't know the answer to. Um, at what point should 1,500 deaths from from one side effect trigger uh, an investigation? Is that a signal that rises to the level of what the CDC set up VAERS to alert pe- alert our government to? Well, if we look historically, and I think the swine flu shot was the the one. I think this is 1976. The sig- first the signal that was recorded, the bar was 50 deaths. They got to 50 deaths in a very short period of time, and it was shut the whole program down. But we are way past 50 deaths with just that um, symptom, high blood pressure um, involved in it. We've we've and we've been way past it since really the first couple of weeks of of the shots being available. I was calling for the termination of the program in January of 2021. I mean, the data, the signals were already very clear that this was going this was going to get worse, especially as you extend it to younger and younger populations. We knew this was going to get horrific and bad, and it's been worse. And so what did they do? They they did what all is fair in love and war, I guess. So they said, let's uh, let's do everything we can to prevent people from from submitting it. Let's do everything we can to clear records. We know we've caught the CDC on at least two occasions. And now I think a third time deleting records from VAERS, which is a federal crime, a judge informed me of last night. And then we have, uh, we, you know, we have a situation where um, you know, I was looking, I've been looking at myocarditis, pericarditis, Naomi, for every time I do a data set update. And when uh, what's been was shocking to me was in September, September 16th data set, we had a um, a signal of over 45,000 cases reported to Varus of, uh, of myocarditis, pericarditis, or heart inflammation, right? All the kind of the same thing. Um, well, when I went back in to do this for you, and I was just like, well, let me go take a look around and see what's going on. Um, there's been records deleted because that number dropped in September from 45,000 to now in um, in December. By December 2nd, that number dropped to where are we, baby? Uh, dropped to 12,544. So um, they've deleted over 30,000 records. They've deleted over 32,000 records. 
uh, from a, specifically with myocarditis and pericarditis. And I've triple checked this. I've, I, I stand by what I'm saying right there that, that they are deleting records again, especially on the biggest safety signal that everybody's aware of. And it's not an accident that they would do this with Dr. Uh, Latipo and uh, Governor DeSantis coming out with that study about myocarditis and pericarditis. They are trying to do everything they can to delete records to thwart what Governor DeSantis and and General, the Surgeon General in Florida, Dr. Uh, uh, Latipo, are doing. I, I, I'm i stunned. Um, you know, once again, it's people like Dr. Ely doing the work that should be done by the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. I mean, this is as big as the Pentagon Papers easily, if indeed the CDC deleted those records, I've seen the screenshots, it looks pretty bad, right? Um, and so you're saying that the uh, Dr. Ladapo and Governor DeSantis uh, calling for a grand jury investigation, what what could be the reason that they're hiding, they're deleting these um, basically evidence of, of their crimes because Ladapo and DeSantis would be investigating that data? Is that what you're saying? Right. When you read through the grand jury petition that Governor DeSantis signed uh, and submitted to the Florida Supreme Court, they are putting a lot of what they are, their argument based upon their findings with myocarditis. So uh, myocarditis, pericarditis. Um, and, and that's not without good reason. So the the issue is if you're the CDC now and you know you've been com- complicit in data fraud from day one, what do you start doing? Well, you've been deleting records for the last couple of years. Why not delete the records specific for myocarditis and pericarditis to to try to thwart their attempts and try to discredit their analysis of, of what they're doing? That's that's oh, what it looks like to me right now. Gosh. That and that is indeed a, that's that's a, that's many felonies. I mean, that's not just a felony in terms of data handling. That's a felony in terms of the criminal process. Right. Isn't that that's covering up evidence of a crime. Well, yeah, it would be, it would it definitely any, any time the, the problem with Veras as a, as a federal system is yes, maybe if there is an erroneous record here or there, you know, that you should have the ability to delete it. But when you start seeing the CDC deleting hundreds of thousands of records and removing in this case over 32,000 records, or at least removing the, the, the search term from the, because that's my suspicion here, Naomi, is that they didn't delete the record. What they deleted was that word myocarditis or pericarditis or heart inflammation in the actual report. Okay. And, and so that's, mo- that's modification of official uh, record. And when you do that, that's now criminal fraud again. Yes. And, uh, and and of course, it throws off our ability to really understand what's going on with this, because we rely on systems like this mm-hmm. to give us information for making decisions. Well, I mean, to say the least, but with the bodies mounting up, I mean, you know, there are so many horrific stories of young, healthy people staining myocarditis, pericarditis, dropping dead, athletes dropping dead. I mean, it you know. That this is, I mean, mass murder, and this is a, a cover up of, of evidence of mass murder. Um, it, it would appear to me, I don't think that's too strong to say. Um, good heavens, I do want to say one thing, elaborate on what you just said. Um, di- people love digital products, but they have a fantasy about them. They don't, <clears throat> pardon me, an algorithm doesn't have to tell you the truth. Right. And what I love about what you've done and your meticulous um, explication of how VAERS and CDC are using data to hide the truth is I just want to stress to people that what Dr. Ely said is, and, and I made this point with elections, I can't stress it enough. You can hide or censor or conceal any evidence in a database by just changing the search terms, changing what the algorithm counts. And the algorithm is not neutral. People think it just, you know, neutrally scans the data, but that's not true. Your developer tells the algorithm what to produce when there's a search. And you really have to understand that because it means that any number of, like they could take deaths and re, you know, tell the machine to count them as fatalities and just not list fatalities prominently or hide it, you know, two clicks in and you will literally not be able to ever find the deaths or they could just tell the algorithm not to count certain things or to count other things twice. There is nothing verifiable about a digital 
database, I just want to say that really clearly. And that's why what Dr. Ely is doing is so important because he's saying, no, we're not going to let you lie by using these very, you know, to people who work with data sets and digital databases, very obvious tricks, right? Like very transparent ways of throwing sand in the eyes of people who are trying to get at the truth. So I just want to say that. And I want to also say it if they're listening. At some point, I hope you do listen to this, uh, Dr. Ladapo and Governor DeSantis, you need Dr. Ely, Senator Linthicum, Senator Thatcher, and this amazing team, which I'm proud to say includes my wonderful husband, investigator Brian O'Shea, um, because what you all have uncovered is absolutely stunning and you continue to to make headlines. And this latest, which you've presented, should be on the cover of every every newspaper um, and every magazine in, in, in every news site in the in, in the world. This is huge if indeed they're concealing myocarditis um, outcomes.